Welcome back to the INET Solution Member Protect Tutorials. In this video, we will be talking about roles and privileges. As soon as we visit this page, we're informed that we need to log in to view the sample navigation. If I click this button, it, it won't work. So we'll go ahead and log in. One of the default users that are available to you to use, although you can use any user that you might have created after the fact, is the admin user. So we'll log in as the admin user. The only indication that we've logged in is this little message. In a, in a real system, you might actually have you know, the name of the person that's logged in or any other number of things to let somebody know who, who they actually are. So we'll go back to the roles and privileges um, page, and, and now the sample navigation will show up. It's pretty much that simple, but I'm not going to leave it there because talking about roles and privileges is, is a little bit more complicated and, and advanced than that. It's a very, actually a very powerful feature of the Member Protect system for security purposes. Obviously, when I logged, when I came to this page, when I wasn't logged in, um, I didn't see this menu. But after I logged in, I can see it. So there's obviously some way that we're able to check and know that a user is logged in or not. So let's take a look at the code behind to see how that's all working. This is the code for that uh, tutorial three, which is the roles and privileges. Beyond the uh, obvious code that has been in all of our tutorials so far. It's, it gets a little more different here when we talk about the member protect object and the current user module, which we've not talked about yet. The current user module is a kind of a, a developer shortcut module that allows you, the developer, or whoever's doing the coding, to easily access whoever the current user in the system might be. After a user is logged in, the current user module is then populated with the information of whoever just logged in. So there's easy access methods to figure out who the user's name is, what their ID is, um, various functions to set their their custom user information, etc. So it's a it's more of a convenience module than anything. It's very similar to the user module, but it has just a subset of those functions available, the ones that are most commonly used. So within that current user module, we are checking an is authorized public property, which is simply a Boolean value that designates whether or not uh, the current user has been authenticated and actually logged into the member protect system or not. And we can take a look at how that took place in the default page, which is actually our login page. This is the previous code from one of our previous videos talking about the reset button. If we go above that and we go to the login logic, we do some simple checks to see if the user exists. And if they do, then we call the current user module again in a, the, the very important method called login with passing in the username that was supplied. This is very simple. In a real production system, it would not be this simple. And I don't want to give any indication that it would be. But this is what this, this line of code is what actually logs a user in. And what that technically does is it associates the session that's being used for this ASP.NET session, which um, we, if we go back to the base page, when we created our member protect object and we passed our settings object, we created that with a connection string, that second parameter of the session session ID, which is the ASP.NET session ID, again, another GUID value, get, got passed into the member protect system. So it knows what your session is, but it doesn't necessarily mean that somebody's logged in yet and we don't know who that person is. So upon this default page, when we log in, now we know that, this, that the ASP.NET session is associated with the username that we just typed in. And from that point forward, if we go in back, we go into the database here, and we do a little select from the MP user table, we can see that we logged in with admin and the session ID column now contains uh, the session information. I'm sorry, I called that a GUID and it's not. Session ID information that's that's associated with that user. So now Member Protect knows the next time the Member Protect loads or you move around in the site to remember to, to, to resync this session ID with the user. That's a very pivotal piece of, of how this um, Member Protect system works. So go back to the code. Um, and I want to reiterate that normally in a login, you want to do some things like, you know, validate the password and maybe do some risk-based authentication and, and do some at least some very basic authentication before we, we call this function. As soon as this function is called, the user is logged in. And in this situation, there's no security checks whatsoever, so I can log in as whoever I want to be, which is normally a bad thing. But again, for tutorials, it's for explanation purposes. Remember, Member Protect is very flexible, so I can do things that are not secure like this. It's up to the developer to, to be aware of what they're doing to make sure that they're not opening holes in their application, etc. 